Now let's look at information content and neural network learning. We all know the saying that a picture is worth more than a thousand words. We are going to show it in the next two slides, 27 and 28. Here looking at an old fashioned black and white television screen, it has 500 rows, 600 columns, each pixel has eight brightness levels. The amount of information provided by the TV screen is 900,000 bits. A broadcaster has a pool of 10,000 vocabularies and he's randomly selecting 1,000 words from this pool. The amount of information provided by the broadcaster is 13,000 bits. We see that the amount of information provided by an old black and white TV is indeed more than a thousand words. For example, if one considers a 52 inch high definition TV screen, then the information content provided by this high definition TV would even be much higher than the black and white TV. In view of the evidence, a two-dimensional image provides more information as compared with the verbal descri description. The information content for image is basically very high. The image is somewhat stronger and has longer retention effect in our neural network as compared with the sequential information. For example, as we age, we sometimes tend to forget a person's name even though our brain can actually see that person's image. It is rare that we knew the name but lost the image. Let me further note that our brain has two major sensing perception, perceptions, temporal or spatial. Temporal is sequential and spatial is pictorial. Mostly, it is the spatial information that plays somewhat significant role in our daily lives because the spatial sensing inherently contains higher information content. Let us add one more aspect of information transmission and reception as shown in the next slide. Looking at information transmission can be either temporal, spatial representation, or both. TV display is a typical example of exploiting the temporal information transmission for spatial information display. Old-fashioned movie soundtrack is an example of exploiting the spatial information for temporal information transmission. A continuous running TV program is an example of spatial and temporal information transmission. Let's take a look at one dimension versus two dimension calculation. On the left hand side you see a one dimensional abacus and on the right hand side we see a two dimension abacus. Note that it is in fact a logarithmic machine or an entropy calculator. Take a look at the value of pi broken into 10 arrays of numbers in slide 31. We have seen that by permuting a one-dimensional calculating machine into a two-dimensional format representation, that is the uh, abacus, it makes the device more efficient as a calculating machine. Or a sequence of pi numbers into array of two-dimensional format, this will make it easier for us to remember the sequence of numbers as shown in slide 30 and 31 respectively. Note that one dimensional calculator or the 1D abacus had been developed independently in several ancient civilizations including Egypt, Indian, Babylonian, Chinese and others thousands of years ago. 
the Chinese converted into a two-dimensional format a couple thousand years later and called it abacus. We see that the transformation from 1D to 2D representation offers tremendous advantages and efficiencies. Notice that since it became a 2D device, the abacus had been used by the Chinese, Japanese, and many East Asian countries for thousands of years until the recent development of electronic calculators, which eventually replaced it. The other example is permuting the sequence of pi numbers into array of two-dimension uh, two-dimensional format. This would make it easier for us to remember the sequence of numbers as shown in slide 31. We, said, we see that this array of numbers can be associated to 10 telephone numbers, which is not very difficult for an average person to remember these 10 phone numbers. This also explains why by transforming an array of numbers into a 2D array format, it changes the nature of problem from almost impossible to remember 100 digits to possible to remember. You may ask, how can one smartly remember the pi numbers? It's an excellent example to show that by taking advantage of the inherent human neural network's 2D perception capability, and by adopting a smart association process, it will improve the neural network's learning ability. I call this creative learning, which we will discuss later. Again, a picture is worth more than a thousand words. It is far more advantageous to watch a historical event on video than actually reading a history book. We are able to visualize the event we saw on the video many years ago, but we may not remember what we had read in the historical text. Let me present once more the significance of transforming a one-dimensional format into a two-dimensional representation shown in slide 32. On the left-hand side, we see the alphabet from 1 to Z. It represents a one-dimensional keyboard. On the right-hand side, we show a two-dimensional keyboard on the typewriter. As we see that without the two-dimensional keyboard representation, the typewriter would never be uh, developed. If one looks a bit deeper, Without the development of the 2D keyboard on the typewriter, then the personal computer would be very difficult or almost impossible to develop. In the next slide, we can visualize the complexity of a personal computer that we have developed. <laughs> 